What's up everybody? It's another edition of As the Crow Flies Hiking and with me today is Leonidas on the trail. Well, I say it's another edition of As the Crow Flies Hiking, but it's not. It's not. This is a different thing I'm doing. And that is to interview people that I backpack with. One of my favorites, Leonidas right. on the trail. So we're both from Alabama and uh, we're out hiking the Fiery Gizzard Trail. And I've got 10 questions for Leonidas. So welcome to Old Crow Hiking Show. That's what we're calling it. All right, so here's the question. Number one, how did you get started in backpacking? Well, first I got started, I guess, back in Boy Scouts. We didn't backpack a lot. It was more just camping. Like my family camped, then I liked camping. So I got into Boy Scouts and we camped. My, my troops, we never actually backpacked. We always would just go out somewhere, hike out a little bit and throw our stuff out and camp. We never did like, went to film on or any of that kind of, you know, backpacking stuff so did that and then as I got older kind of got out of it I had some friends we would kind of go camping every now and then but then like in college and stuff I just kind of got out of it all together yeah. you know mm -hmm. and 2016 I guess I was kind of just looking for something to do and so I started I don't even remember how I started watching stuff on YouTube but somehow I got turned on to Appalachian trail hiking you know, stuff like that. And so I was kind of like, yeah, that'd be interesting. I mean, I had heard of the AT, you know, in Scouts and my uncle, actually two of my uncles had hiked part of it. They had hiked, I think to Damascus. I always thought that'd be kind of cool. So I started kind of looking into doing it. I was just thinking I'll take a week of vacation from work and I'll just go by myself. And then I mentioned it to my wife and she's like, oh, I want to go. And I was like, <laughs> what, what, what? So your she's wife like, went with you the yeah, first so trip? The first, the, well, yeah, so the first trip we did overnight backpacking we did a couple car camping trips but backpacking was on the at so she and i went and did from springer to dicks creek gap that's impressive that you got your wife so, to go with you on your first trip right. back as an adult that's cool so now it's a tradition every year she and oh, i go right. out and yeah. hike we've been sectioning the at so I'm, i don't she doesn't like it if I do any parts of the at that she hasn't done yet because so. she wants to continue right she work. we're going to continue yeah. on and hopefully so I'll turn 50 in 2026. So the plan is my youngest son will graduate that year. So the plan is I'm going to take, if work will let me, I'm going to take all my vacation at one time and we'll do the last 500 miles oh, of the trail awesome. to, you know, turn 50 that year, 500 miles on trail and we'll summit Katahdin. So that would be awesome. That's so the, the plan. We'll be looking for that. 2026. We'll see. Well, that's how he got started backpacking. So I know you're interested in the name Leonidas. So tell us how you got the trail name Leonidas. Before I started really hiking, I had a YouTube channel where I was doing workout videos. I had a bunch of friends online that did workout videos and stuff. And um, I started growing my beard. I actually had a long goatee at that time and I had shaved my head. And so they had started <laughs> calling me Master Roshi from Dragon Ball Z. Cause I was, you know, older, older than them and, you know, built cause at that time I was probably 200 pounds and maybe 6% body fat. Oh my goodness. I was, they were calling me that. Then I just kind of started growing my hair back out. And then one of the guys was like, man, you look like Leonidas from 300. Yeah, 300. And I was like, okay, well, you know, that's not backpacking. So that first trip me and my wife went on, we were hiking along and, you know, I had already given her a trail name because the first night on trail, we ended up having a night hike. And she kept like stumbling, so I started calling her Stumbelina. <laughs> so that was her trail name. So we get all the way to Blue Mountain Shelter. Like I said, I was about 200 pounds, low body fat. I had on some three inch inseam, <laughs> short shorts, and like a, a compression short sleeve Under Armour top. And I go walking into Blue Mountain Shelter, and there's these two like stone guys. And the one guy's like, Hey man, what's your trail name? And I was like, I don't have one. He's like, you look just like that Leonidas guy from 300, man. And my wife just starts shaking her head like, no, don't yep. tell him that. It's on now. And so then he's like, dude, that's your trail name. And I'm like, cool. Okay. So that's how I got the trail name. And so. that's how I first saw you was when you were hiking with Darwin on the right. Ben Hody. Yep. And I reached out because, you know, I knew you were from Alabama. Right. So uh, that's how I knew you as Leonidas to begin with. I know that this is a loaded question because it depends on the season. What is your big three? That is backpack, I mean, sleeping bag and tent. Tent, yeah, tent yeah. or shelter, whatever. So tent, doesn't matter the season. I use the Z-Packs Duplex. Mm -hmm. I've used multiple tents before that, but that tent for me has been the best solo and with my wife tent because 
you know, when she goes with me, maximum we're out two weeks. So the fact that it's only 45 inches wide with my wide pad and her regular or her women's, it works. it's tight, but it works, yeah. you know, because it's for a limited amount of time. If we were going to through hike, maybe I'd have a trip wax, yeah, you know, just, yeah. it's, it, I think it's a little too tight for two people for a long period of time, yeah, but yeah. for two weeks, it's great. Yeah. But then for myself, when I'm out, it's light enough and enough room that if it's, you know, the weather's bad or just you need room to move around or whatever, it's just, for me, that's been the best Yeah. for the weight and the room. And just, I kind of got to where I said, I just want one tent that can do everything. Well, and, and I think the re, I mean, you and right. Jay Ben Hikes are the reason I got the duplex because I saw how y'all used it and it just seemed flawless and right. it, it was every, fit every need. So yeah, I think it's uh it's absolutely just such a versatile tent for right. a lot of things. We've done the tent, yeah. sleeping bag. Technically, I have two quilts. Really, there's three. So, 2016, I had a sleeping bag liner that I used, and it was okay, but I, it was it weighed 26, 28 ounces, mm -hmm. and it was maybe good for 55 degrees, which was fine because I sleep hot, but it was just heavy. Yeah. So the next year we were gonna um, we we had skipped ahead for 2017 because the forest fires that burned at the end of 2016 burned that. everything yeah. from Dix Creek all the way up to about the NOC or so. So we decided we're gonna skip that section and start at Fontana and go through the Smokies and then get to Hot Springs or maybe further, we had thought maybe we could get to Sam's Gap in 2017. So because I knew we were going through the Smokies, I kind of checked around online and talked to different people and they were kind of like, you really need a 40 degree quilt for summer in the Smokies because you never know. And I was like, yeah. I don't know, I sleep really hot. And they're like, no, you're gonna want a 40. So. I was gonna get actually a two person 40 degree quilt and just carry it and that way my wife could use that as well, but she didn't want to spend the money for the two person quilt. So I said, well, fine, I'm buying myself a quilt and you can carry, she had a, a fleece sleeping bag liner that weighed like two pounds. Oh goodness. So, and I told her, I said, look, the Smokies can get cold. So that year she didn't bring a puffy and she, you know, and had this sleeping bag liner and it got down to 40 at least one night we were out. We got back, she's like, I want a quilt. So I decided, I said, you know, it's like that 40 was really too warm for when, because we go in the summer. So it's really too warm for me, I'm gonna get a 50. But then I was thinking, I said, well, let me, you know, in case we ever decide, or maybe I might want to go cold weather camping, I want something more versatile. So I said, you know what, I, I checked around at a lighting equipment and just, you know, they were like, hey, if you want to get colder, you can always stack quilts. So I ended up getting a 50 degree long wide with the intent of eventually getting another quilt that I could stuff inside of. Oh, uh, yeah. So my 40, I had an Apex Enigma, so I bought an Apex Enigma 50 long wide. So the 40 would actually fit inside the 50 and not compress anything, and it's supposed to be able to get you down to 20 degrees. And the Apex is the synthetic. It's the synthetic. It's like a climate shield, same yeah. kind of stuff. And then I said, if I decide to go cold weather camping, I'll just take it too, because the two of them together was 26 ounces or something. So I was like, that's not that bad. Yeah. You know, weight wise to be able to get down to 20. I ended up last year, Black Friday, I ended up buying a 30 degree 950 fill and light equipment, equip Enigma. You know, all these sleep clothes are heavy. If I can have an overall warmer sleep system, since when I'm out by myself, I'm going long, and fast and you know i don't sit in camp like we're doing here <laughs> i get to camp eat and go to bed go immediately to bed. so i don't need warmth clothes i need to be able to be just be warm in the tent yeah and then if i get cold i just get up and move again and i'm i leave camp so i decided to buy that 30 just to give me a little more insulation but at a less weight cost than carrying warmer sleep clothes okay so pretty... your backpack so backpack um I've gone through a couple, but right now it's the Z-Pax Arc Blast. But okay. I ordered a new pack today, so we'll see how that how okay. that works out. So. And that is the... It's the Nunatak Bears Ears 50. And that way you can take your bear can. Yeah, it actually bottom. allows you to... <clears throat> it's curved on the bottom, and so your bear canister fits underneath it and straps kind of to the hip belt. It's got kind of a little webbing cradle that holds a barricade or a bear vault 500. So, but I, I really wanted the ability to have the bear canister lower on my center of gravity, especially uh, when I was in the Benton Mackay and I had with the bear canister 17 plus pounds of food. All right, next question. What is your favorite trail? If you have one. 
You know, right now, I think it's probably actually the Benton Mackay. And if you had asked me that when I finished the Benton Mackay, I would have told you that I hated that trail. <laughs> but after just kind of processing the trip and everything, I realized that, that that trail taught me a lot. The Benton Mackay is very diverse. And the Benton Mackay is how many miles? It's 289 miles. So. Okay. What is your favorite part of backpacking? Um, I think it's actually just the hiking part. I'm not... I've gotten more, you know, like these trips, I've come to appreciate the camping part, but I, I'm more motivated by putting in miles and seeing things and taking photos and making video while I'm moving and just seeing how hard I can push myself. Yeah. That's what I like. Kind of the goal of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, goal. just trying to see like how, how far can I push myself? How hard can I push myself? Last year, actually 2020 taught me that, you know, it's good to be diverse in trips and do trips like these where before I started hiking with you guys, I never did shorter trips. It, mm -hmm. You know, we'd go on AT or I'd go by myself and do- Just all about the miles. Yeah, just all about the miles. Yeah. So this oh. has given me appreciation for, you know, just doing things differently. I, I enjoy this, I enjoy what I do and I enjoy when I hike with other people, even if we're doing miles, but not the same miles I would do if I was by myself. So it's kind of, I guess it really depends on the trip. If I'm with other people, then I enjoy the whole social aspect yeah. of the trip. If I'm with my wife, then I enjoy that time because then it's just us and there's, you know, we don't bring the kids and we get to have time, time together. together. Or, you know, sometimes we've had friends come with us on those trips and Jeff's coming with us this year. So that's just time away from everybody else. And now we're far enough along the trail that we get, we're, we end up in the bubble. So and then you get to meet Lots of all people. kinds yeah, of people yeah. from all over. So that's really cool. And then, like I said, then the, the solo trips, I like just being accountable to nobody, not having to worry about anybody, just being like, I can push as hard as I want, go as fast as I want, go as long as I want. Well, let's, uh, let's so, flip it and say, what's your least favorite part of backpacking, if, you, if there is any? I guess really, especially here lately, we've been so, you know, we've been pretty focused on Leave No Trace. So, you know, just seeing the amount of trash on some trails, yeah, good you point. know, yeah. I mean, that's pretty annoying. I mean, because... You know, other things, I mean, yeah, sometimes it's annoying if it rains, but it's part of it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's nice when it, you know, it's enjoyable some days when it rains. It's So I think it's that. It's just sometimes, you know, stuff like that, people leaving trash or on the Benton Mackay. I mean, there's in one of the videos, I end up finding a bunch of trash and a burning campfire. Like right now, I'm like, Seriously. come on, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's stuff like that where it's just, you know, people are irresponsible or lazy. And I guess, you know, it's like they don't think about the fact that there's all these other people out here, too, that are out here to enjoy it. What do you do for fun if you're not backpacking or hiking? Spend time with my wife and kids. Um, I don't really watch TV, so I will i don't watch TV per se. I watch some shows with my wife here and there. Mm -hmm. She likes the British cooking shows, so I'll watch those with her. I like to watch some stuff on YouTube. I know I watch, you know, all the guys we know. I yeah. like to watch each other's stuff just to support each other and just to see what people are doing when we're not on trips together. So that's something I do. I guess really for fun for me too is planning trips. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. all about, me too. you know, making spreadsheets and figuring out logistics and- I've seen your food spreadsheets. Yeah, and... I've got food spreadsheets, lighter pack stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like the trip we're doing on AT this summer, I've got, I've gone through and revised the spreadsheet for that like probably 50 times. Wow. So I, I enjoy that, like the logistics too, like on Reddit or on Facebook or on my channel, you know, helping people that want information about good, yeah. the Pinhoti. You know, I have people hit me up on, you know, Instagram. Hey, I, you know, I found your stuff on, you know, the Pinhoti. Can, you know, give me some information on resupply or yeah. what's a good place to camp in this area or so. I like that stuff too. I mean, it's because that way we can give back. So that's enjoyable to me too. Is Well, I got uh, three questions left, but one of them's real quick because you said you don't watch TV, but yeah. what's your favorite book or movie or even TV show if you have one? Book or movie? Um, right now, my favorite book is the Bible, actually. I've okay. really gotten into reading. It's funny, I've always been real big on reading novels. And like, I'll just, I can just get a huge book and just read it and not be able to put it down. But I've always struggled to enjoy reading my Bible that way. So I've gotten to where now it's hard for me to put it down. I've actually got a book in a series that I was reading and I pre-ordered it because I was like, man, I'm, I've got to read the next book. And then I actually have not even opened it. 
I've had it since November, and I haven't. It's been sitting on the bookshelf, and my kids will be like, Dad, you got that book? Aren't you going to read it? And I'm just like, <laughs> Not yet. Eh, maybe. Well, movie? You have any movies? You don't uh, watch movies, Mo. Not much, but I was thinking about that, and I actually rewatched recently. I watched um, Dances with Wolves. Ah, oh, that's my favorite. And then um, Legends of the Fall. Legends of the Fall. Great movie. Those just Great that. Movie. Yeah. Just the West, like that. Montana. You know, back in the day, my grandfather grew up in Montana, right on the edge of an Indian Beautiful. reservation. He learned to horseback ride from the Indians, how to shoot a bow and arrow. I mean, so just stuff, you know, the scenery of that, the music, all that stuff. I was like, ah. Have you had a scary moment on the trail that you know, you can remember anything scary? I guess in 2019, when we were we were hiking on the trail and we were coming, we were on our way to, I think we're on our way to Mountaineer Shelter maybe. And we were walking with a guy that ended up through hiking the trail that was actually from Birmingham that we just randomly met. So me and my wife were walking, hiking with him and we were talking and we were walking by this creek and everything's cool. And I turned to say something, I look back and I walk into a branch hanging out. Oh no. And it slices my upper lip, like oh, no. just gashes my face open. And I, I literally like go black for a minute. Oh no. And so then I like, I can't tell how bad it is. I mean, there's blood coming out of my face. And so she's, like, oh, what do we do? Because we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So we ended up getting to Mountaineer Shelter and tried to glue it shut with... Um, Ooh, like super glue? With new skin. New skin, oh. But it was so humid it wouldn't stick, so I just had this, like, bloody half a mustache, and I'm just like... <laughs> oh, goodness. So that was kind of scary just not knowing, like, how bad it really was because I really didn't have a good way to clean it very well. So Did I you just, get stitches? No, no. I ended up just... It healed up, and I just got a scar, and... Last question, okay. if, if you're, and I know you like to do this, so if you know somebody getting into backpacking, they come okay. to you and say, give me some advice, what, just quickly, what advice would you give them? You know, what I've seen online, especially everybody wants this, they want to do the buy once, cry once, right? I mean, I get it. You don't want to spend a lot of money. Yeah. You want to spend money one time, buy something good or great, and never have to buy something else. But really, the problem is, just because something works for you or something works for me or something works for J Ben or Fireball or that doesn't mean it's gonna work for somebody else. And so I guess my thing is for this hobby, if you wanna call it a hobby or this lifestyle, if that's what you're doing, there's such a big used market for stuff. I mean, really the best thing you can do is buy used. That's a good point. Figure out what yeah. you wanna use. And then if you don't like it, you can resell it. I mean, yeah. I've bought things use them for a year or two and then sold them for what i bought them for or even in some cases yeah they were still in such good shape i one thing i bought i sold for more than what i paid for it i see a lot of times too where people are like oh it's too expensive to get into backpacking it's like no the problem is you look at people that have been backpacking for a long time and have things dialed in and you think oh i need this this z-packs duplex and i need this the whatever and this you know, I need a $300 backpack and I need a $700 tent and I need a this and a that. And you can get out here and have a good time, you know, with cheap gear until you figure out what you need, what you want, and really how dedicated you are to doing this. I and mean, there's good no point. need to spend a lot of money yeah. up front, especially if you don't know if you're even going to want to continue doing this. That's a good point. So I think that's, you know, some advice, whether people want to hear that or not, because I get yeah. it, you know, you want to buy something and not have to buy anything else. Yeah. So it's kind of, you you know, it's something your style and your needs are going to evolve over over time. So, Good point. You know. Good advice from Leonidas on the trail. So been hiking with Leonidas, I guess, for about a year now or yes. so. I think it's a year to the to the day. almost. Oh, wow. So, so it's been it's been really a pleasure hiking with Leonidas because he's so knowledgeable about stuff. And if you want to, please check out his channel, Leonidas on the trail. Uh, great channel. Great guy and an absolute beast of a hiker. I can't keep up with him. I can just see his dust in the distance. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching this episode of uh, Old Crow Hiking Show. I interview backpackers that, uh, that I come in contact with. Thank you, Leonidas, for doing this. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure, me. and uh, it was great, uh, great comments and good advice here. We'll see you next time on the next episode of Old Crow Hiking Show.